Good morning, ladies. So for those of you that are probably thinking, who is this? What is she doing on here? Where is Jen? So Jen is on a very well-deserved family vacation in Jamaica. So I thought while she was away, I would hack into her Facebook and I already hacked into her Instagram and posted on there as well because I wanted to come on and chat to you all about the importance of gut health, which I feel we all kind of know, but then there's these symptoms that are very common that occur and people really are kind of blown away when I tell them when they come into my office that they are related to gut health. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Dr. Laura Anderson. I am the team naturopath on Jen Pike's Team Simplicity. So I just wanted, yeah, to come on and chat about that because it's something that I get asked about all the time. I see with patients all of the time and same with Jen. I mean, it's some of her foundational modules in the Simplicity Project and the Hormone Project. So the first one I wanted to talk about was your gut health in relation to your mental well-being. So I recently did an article for The Pulse, which is a publication for the Ontario Association of Naturopathic Doctors. So I did the connection between your you know, anxiety and really what's going on in the gut. So it was it was really great for me because I was able to dive into all the recent articles and the research. And oh my gosh, all I can tell you, I mean, it, there is such a huge connection. And so the, you know, even down to the very basics of, you know, cellular biology of the, the neurotransmitters and the receptors and the neurons and everything like that. I mean, everything that's going on up here in terms of that, you know, cellular level is definitely going on in your gut as well. So some interesting cases have been, you know, people maybe go traveling and they get a really bad viral like gastroenteritis. So, you know, they've been vomiting, they're like diarrhea. Um, it's just not a good thing that is happening. It's never pleasurable, especially when you're traveling. But, um, but, but then what they notice is that after they, you know, recover, now they might be getting, you know, they really feel anxious. They've been getting panic attacks and they're thinking, I never, I've never had this before. Like what happened? And so, you know, a virus that's that intense can really destroy kind of the natural harmonious, you know, microbiome and ongoings of the digestive system. And so that can really cause, again, like what's going on in your digestive system is going, what's, you know, really going on in your mind as well. And so that can definitely be a correlation, you know, for, so for a patient with that sort of situation, you know, the root cause would really be going and fixing the gut, not immediately just, okay, you need an anti-anxiety medication, something like that. Right. So it's always about getting to the root cause. Um, so but then the opposite can happen too. So there could be just a lot of psycho psychosocial stress going on in the mind. There can be, you know, certain things in terms of, you know, trauma and loss and grief and depression that can also change what's going on in your gut. Cause again, it's all, it's all connected. So it's, you know, one of the things that we can do every day, right? Multiple times a day is working on aspects of your gut health. Um, so yeah, that is something. And oh, Karen posted, would love to know how information and how to heal my gut. Yeah, I really struggle with my, yeah, for sure. And I mean, and, and I really do think this is one of the reasons why more and more people are experiencing the, you know, this range of being anxious and then depressed. Um, and mood and all of that sort of thing is because I really do think on a general level, you know, we're society where we're go, 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 we're stressed all the time, right? So again, stress, right? That's what's going on in your head. But then, you know, everything's so busy, there's no time to eat healthy, you're just picking up whatever at, you know, the grocery store or fast food or restaurant. And just that, that level and that intensity and your body really is needing so much nutrients in order to keep up with that lifestyle, but we're just kind of getting by on kind of the quick things or certain foods um, that we're not really giving 
our system as much nutrients as it needs. So you're really kind of depleting the gut. There might be more infl inflammation going on, you know, certain medications, certain antibiotics, just the mere fact of the different toxins that we're exposed to in our environment is also really destroying us from the inside, really. Um, and so all of these things happening, again, it is, it is so important to really get back to basics and learn about gut health because you don't learn about this stuff you don't really learn it in school um it's nothing that we're really taught it's it's you know i even remember myself kind of coming to a point i feel i was maybe about 16 and my mom had a book in our home called healing with whole foods and i remember flipping through that thinking and and for the first time really making the connection that okay when i eat an apple when i eat an orange i'm getting vitamin c and i'm getting all of these cool nutrients but that is also what's helping my system and it just it was the first time i really made that realization that what you're eating is so important to then help giving you the proper nutrients and the building blocks for your body and your your health overall so yeah, it's, it's one of those things where, and that's what I love about with the simplicity project that Jen runs is that her modules cover, I mean, of course the gut health, but then even like I mentioned the whole toxin stuff in our environment. I mean, there are chemicals that didn't even exist 10, 20, 30 years ago, whether it's from industry. And so it's actually in our air. So we can't really you know, do anything but inhale it um, in our food, in our textiles. I mean, it really is be like we are being inundated from every angle. And so, you know, it's it's nice to learn about kind of each different aspect of the health in the Simplicity Project in order, you know, to really work through that. Um, yeah, so that is definitely one thing on kind of the gut health in relating to you know, your, your mental well being, there is such a huge correlation. And so if that is something that you're struggling with, I would really then look into and maybe get help, you know, with a practitioner or maybe, you know, with like learning about the simplicity project a bit more about really learning, okay, like, do I have gut problems? Like, I didn't think I did. Because that's the other thing too, that I find very, very important to, you know, we just kind of mention because I have patients who we start improving on their gut health, and then it's not till after they realize, you know, because I might ask them at the beginning of our, you know, consultation, okay, do you have heartburn? Do you have, like, how are your bowel movements? Do you feel bloated? Um, you know, things like that. And it's not till after they think, oh, yeah, like, the way I feel now, I actually realized that, yeah, I was having stomach pain and I was having bloating but i never i never knew i i never didn't know what it was not like to feel that way because they just get so used to it and so you forget how good you used to feel and i think that's something that when you start improving certain aspects and even if it's slowly and i mean that's definitely something that i recommend just you know one step at a time right um so you don't feel overwhelmed but just to be doing those sort of things um Oh, and then Karen just put two. Here, let me just put this down. Every evening around dinner time, my face get really red and hot. It lasts for about an hour, hour and a half, and it can be before and afternoon. Or sometimes I have to go outside because I'm so hot. Do you think it's a gut issue? Yeah, that's very interesting. I would look. Yeah, so really, every evening around dinner time. Yeah, I would definitely think so. It could be something you're eating. Um, it almost kind of sounds like like it'd be a really good kind of symptom for acupuncture. I do a lot of acupuncture in my process because you're so so the fact that you're getting like red and hot, that's a lot of heat. So that could be a lot of inflammation. So it could be some of the inflammation from your gut um, being stimulated because food is coming or they or you've just eaten. Um, so yeah, that's kind of an interesting symptom to kind of you know work around and um, yeah try to navigate through and kind of keep a symptom journal too for sure going through that. Um, yeah, yeah, great question. So then some other different symptoms that can also be caused by the gut is things that are going on with your skin. 
Eczema is a very, very common one. And I'd like to give the example of, so when I see young babies and they have tons of eczema, but the only thing they're actually eating is breast milk. So then there's been many cases where I've chatted with the mom and I've said, okay, what are you eating in your diet? Because it's very, very common that what's in your diet is actually causing the issue with your baby's eczema. So a lot of the time it's kind of the big foods that just tend to be more inflammatory. People just have a harder time to digest. So cow's dairy is number one. So many times I eliminate that solely from the mother's diet and the baby is, um, yeah, you're welcome, Karen. Yeah, no problem. Um, and the baby improves. And sometimes it's only been breast milk or sorry, it's only been the cow's milk that we've taken away from the mother's diet. Other times, you know, having a little bit of support, if there's been antibiotic use already, we're putting in some really good quality non-dairy probiotics. A lot of probiotics are dairy based. So we want to make sure you have more human strains and human based bacteria in your body because we are humans. We're not cows. And some omega-3s and things like that too. I mean, it all depending how old the baby is. But so again, it's, you know, it's not looked at for many cases where the parents will tell me, you know, I've, I've taken them into the pediatrician and they've just said they need more steroid creams, their body's too dry, don't have a really hot bath, like don't bath them in very hot water, it's drying them out, things like that. But that's just the surface. It is so what's going on in the gut is the cause. And so, and then of course, working with adults and eczema is an issue too. Let's look at your diet. Let's cut out the very inflammatory foods or foods that you're sensitive to. Let's add things back into your diet that are very healing. Have you been on a lot of medications? Have you been on a lot of antibiotics and things like that? So it really, really does come down to the gut, especially for things like eczema. Um, another thing is acne as well. I do find this has a lot to do with diet. There for sure is a hormonal component. And again, it's really looking to see for the individual person what, what seems to be the cause and where is the best place to start. So, you know, I know for myself having acne, it's, you know, when I hit puberty, I had a lot of acne, like scarring acne. It was just not fun. And I know for myself, um, it, was very much diet related. And I kind of was at that, you know, time in my life, like I'd never heard what a naturopath was before I was, you know, 13 or whatever, 14. And so I went on, I went on like tetracycline, I think it was called and like the birth control pill to help contain like my acne that was like all across my forehead. And um, it wasn't until then when I was 19, when I actually started to learn about naturopathic medicine and decided I wanted to become one, that I started seeing a naturopath. And he was the one that really hit it home for me was, okay, we're going to do an elimination diet and we're going to see what food might be causing this issue. And like, it was dairy for me. And so cutting out that adding in some less inflammatory foods, it really helped in that regard. But then also just learning too how important the liver is because your liver is the one that is filtering all of your blood, all of the stuff in your body because the liver kind of acts like this garbage can. So you put all the stuff in it and if you don't have the proper systems in place to empty that on a regular basis, it gets over full and it's just garbage coming out over the top. And then at the bottom, it's all like fermenting and being smelly and really being gross. And so that's got to come out somewhere. And so for every different person, there's different susceptibilities. So sometimes people, their issues come out on their skin. So that is 100%. That's the type of person I am and my susceptibility is my skin. Other people, it comes out in their joints, they feel achy, and just they feel like a rusty hinge when they wake up in the morning. Other time it's, you know, headaches, other times it's yeast infections, we all have these different susceptibilities in our body but again just coming back to okay let's stick with the basics let's you know really work with the foundations of looking at the importance of your gut and liver health because they go so hand in hand another really common symptom that i've been finding lately is women coming into my practice and they've got hives they've never had hives before 
and they're thinking out of nowhere, I'm waking up and I'm blotchy and red and itchy and it's just driving me crazy. I mean, I know I had one patient who, it was pretty intense um, and so she had come to me, but then like in the same time seeing her medical doctor, so she was on prednisone, which is super potent, super powerful on the body, completely suppresses your immune system. So no doubt her highs got better, but it's just a band-aid cause because whenever you come off the prednisone, it just comes back with a vengeance. And so it kind of my, made my role a little bit more challenging because uh, it's just, I understand where the patients are coming at because you really don't want to be having this because it's interfering with your life. But then on the other aspect, you really want to get down and work on the root cause of what is happening and so what was interesting with this patient was that when I asked her the history of when it started it actually started back when she lost not one but both of her grandparents who meant a lot to her it was a huge it was a huge shock for both of them as well as of course grief but also being taught in Chinese medicine and using acupuncture a lot in my practice the lung in Chinese medicine, each organ in the in the body in Chinese medicine also correlates to an emotion. The lung is corresponds to grief. The lung also controls the skin. So interesting correlation. So I remember when I explained that to her, I mean, like her jaw just dropped. She's just like, whoa, like that really makes sense. So it it really helped me kind of get her to a different level of okay this is why we're going to do acupuncture because i'm supporting the energetics of the lung because of the grief and the shock and that supporting that from that level that energetic level is going to help with the hives but then we were also doing other things to add in like natural um like natural histamine sort of thing in order to um like in a homeopathic form to help reduce like that histamine release and things like that so i mean it is a process but it's just one of these things where even then other patients i've had where it's purely because they've just gotten so gunked up in their liver that their body just can't handle all of this extra, you know, inflammation. So it comes out in their skin and it comes out in hives, but working on the liver. So eating, you know, foods that are simulating the liver, having, you know, freshly squeezed lemon in your water, maybe having herbal tinctures that are supporting the liver, like dandelion and milk thistle, having milk thistle CT, having, you know, more beets and artichokes in your diet. And then maybe even more specific herbs to help support the liver you help really empty out that garbage can and then the body calms down because there's not as much inflammation and kind of junk in your system um and then the other yeah immunity is the other thing i wanted to talk about so this is something else that a lot of people are kind of shocked when i say your immune system lies like 80 percent in the lining of your gut so if your gut's not so happy neither is going to be your immune system you're going to be sick all the time you're going to pick up certain things that are going around or when you do get sick you're sick for so long i have heard so many cases especially this past winter but i even just feel it's just more and more common now that you know people get sick and it's yeah i've been sick for a month like that is not okay right that is not not okay at all but just because it's common and it's happening with everybody else doesn't mean that it's it's just like meh like nothing i can do oh yeah there is there is tons of things that you can do and working on your gut reducing the inflammation supporting your liver is a hundred percent the basics because it's going to support you in all of those other ways that i've mentioned but then of course your immune system i mean it is no fun to be getting sick um you know especially those of you with young kids at home they're bringing home things from daycare and from school and i mean it's one thing to deal with your children when they're sick but it's another thing to deal with your sick kids when you were also sick right it just draws more resources out of you it's exhausting um and so that's something else making sure you Good, you have some really, really good, um, you know, probiotics in your system. And again, like I mentioned, don't have just like the cheap ones that 
um, you know, you got a super smoking deal at Costco, get really good quality ones. When in doubt, reach out to your practitioner um, and get like a non-dairy base. Um, and, but then, you know, there's other things too, like just reducing the different types of foods that you're eating, but then also adding in some really healthful nutrient foods. I mean, it's kind of basic stuff that we really know. Make sure you're being hydrated. Make sure that, you know, you're not having a lot of sugar. And by sugar, I mean, not, you know, sugar in real foods or root vegetables. I mean, you know, white refined sugar, high fructose corn syrup, that sort of stuff in, you know, cookies and sweets and candies. But even things, uh, you know, that you may not even know that they're in, in different dressings and sauces in, you know, maybe prepackaged foods, like look on the labels. And it's amazing how often when you don't even think something's very sweet, you look on it, you think, oh, great. Yeah, there is like white sugar and high fructose corn syrup in that. Like I had no idea. Um, so yeah, it's just definitely something to keep in mind that, you know, I do think we all kind of realize, yeah, like we kind of know it's, you know, we should eat better and eat more vegetables and fruits, but that's where you're getting all the nutrients from. So if you don't want to be in a lot of supplements, make sure you are, you know, grabbing and making like really healthful smoothies, making smoothies that aren't just yogurt and fruit, making sure there's like berries and a nut milk and maybe a nut yogurt or like a coconut yogurt, really good quality protein, maybe some greens powders in there or just a handful of spinach, a nut butter for really healthy fat or maybe an avocado for really healthy fat. So that is a very healthy breakfast. When you are starting your day on just a lot of you know fruits and maybe a little bit of yogurt it's really not going to be the the smoothie that's going to get you through the rest of the day it's starting your day off with a bit more inflammation from the you know cow's yogurt as well as a lot more of um the you know sugars from a lot of the fruit depending on what fruit that you put in there um so yeah so that's something to keep up on there as well yeah, so Vanessa says, what are your favorite tools for liver support? Oh, yeah, so this is one of my favorite topics because, again, it's so crucial for almost every aspect of your body. So even, like, even working with women with hormones, your liver is where all of your hormones are being made and then broken down and being processed and getting out of your body. So different things. So like I already kind of mentioned, right, having different herbs that really support and you can have herbs in a tea form or a tincture form. So that's alcohol extract, or you could even have them in a dried extract. So like in a capsule and really powerhouse herbs for that are dandelion roots and milk thistle seed are probably some of my favorite. Um, globe artichoke is another one that you see in formulas. Um, yeah, those are kind of be like the top, top three that are really, really awesome. And milk thistle seed, that one has research a lot. Of, well, they all have research, but especially milk thistle seed, um, the active component is silly marin and that can regenerate liver tissue, which is really, really awesome, right? And then the dandelion root is different than dandelion leaf because you might see dandelion leaf as a tea. And that is more for uh, like a diuretic approach, which I mean is fine, but we don't really want that. We want something that's really helping to stimulate the liver itself. So that's what I would go for the liver uh, or sorry, the dandelion root. And again, you could have that kind of every day as a tea, which is kind of more the, the, a healthful dietary form to get the herb in. You would be probably going a little bit stronger, more for like a therapeutic dose, especially if you were seeing a, a healthcare practitioner um, by using more of a tincture form or an herbal extract form. Um, and then dietary, I mean, adding things like really good quality, you know, like artichoke and having beets and having even like onions and garlic, both, you know, cooked, but then also not cooked either because you get different medicinal pr properties depending how they are prepared. 
Castor oil topically is also something that I love to recommend, and I also do it on myself almost every single day. It is simple as you get castor oil, you put it right, like slather it right over your abdomen. Your liver begins underneath your right breast, and it goes basically across your whole abdomen because it is a massively huge organ. Um, and then I put a towel over top, and then I put a hot water bottle or a heating pack, leave it on for 20, 30 minutes while I watch a show before I go to bed. And then by the time I take it off, everything is absorbed. Anything that's not absorbed, just rub off or rub into the skin. But what I love about castor oil is that in Chinese medicine, it has a very excellent property of releasing stagnation. Anything in the digestive system, in the reproductive system, um, or you know, in the liver, stagnation can be things like cysts. So especially say like cysts on the ovaries or things like that. A cyst in Chinese medicine is just like a stuck little pocket of physical substance. And many times I get patients to do this and they go back for their ultrasound and their cysts are gone or they have reduced in size, which is amazing. So do that for that reason maybe you're doing it really to help your liver it's going to help re you know reduce the inflammation in there because it is breaking apart that stagnation or that stuck feeling um it is also going to help stimulate the liver as well to make sure it's doing its thing in the digestive system it's helping again releasing the stagnation for a lot of people this might be constipation um and again there's a lot of inflammation in the gut as well so it's helping just to like break it down in a healthful way. So it's not just this overwhelming, all of this is changing and you might feel really sick or ill or something like that. Um, and then, yeah, like, I guess, I mean, there's so many different things that you could, you know, add in as well. I mean, an anti-inflammatory that is also very good for the liver, like curcumin is amazing. So maybe have your turmeric lattes, um, maybe adding this into your smoothies, maybe take a pill, right, of like a really good high dose like curcumin. But again, under the direction of somebody, because you kind of go into the health food store. And I mean, it's not even just health food stores. It's, you know, health food section of grocery stores. I mean, it's just everywhere you go, there's all these supplements and it's super overwhelming of what to even to do. Um, so I would really, you know, get direction from your healthcare practitioner. Um, but even, you know, something like the Simplicity Project in the very first module is the gut and, you know, liver protocol. And so learning about and understanding that it kind of gives some guidelines on things to start to think about doing and think about adding in, in a safely manner. Um, but when you're working with a practitioner, you're able to go a little bit deeper of more of a specific dosage for you. Um, because a lot, what you read on labels is more, a general safe dosage that just with labeling requirements they have to put on there. So, you know, usually you might be taking a little bit more that's on that's suggested on the label when you're working with a practitioner because you want to have a therapeutic effect. You don't want to just have like a regular dietary effect. Yeah, so something to keep in mind. Okay, so some questions. So Christine, I have some gallstones and find that a lot of liver supplements say not to take if you have gallstones. Yeah, so yeah, that would definitely be something to look into um, with the gallstones and looking at just like the overall health of the bladder because I mean, it could be something that you don't want to irritate too much because that'd be super painful, but I think also making sure, again, just the gentle, just the gentle therapies, like I mentioned, wouldn't really stimulate it to that degree. Having, you know, really concentrated amounts of certain liver herbs might, but I mean, having something like a tea, having, you know, a castor oil pack might be a really good idea because it's very, very gentle. I mean, people don't do one castor oil pack and like feel all of a sudden, oh yeah, my sister's shrinking in my ovaries and I've had like a massive bowel movement because I've been constipated for years. I mean, it works very slowly over time. Um, but yeah, that would definitely be something you'd have to work a bit more closer with a practitioner for, for sure. And then Karen, if you are 
if you deal with digestive issues and constipated IBS or taking liver detox, yeah, something's dangerous. So yeah, you definitely would have to be a little bit careful in that regard. However, you know, you are wanting to make sure that you're working on a digestive level because with IBS, right, like there's a lot of issues there, but with, you know, the liver, it is going to help stimulate your digestive secretions in order to maybe help break down your food, to maybe help the motility of your whole system improve a little bit better so you're not as constipated. But maybe for you, the first step would be, you know, actually like reduce the inflammation or maybe like it's, it's really hard to say. Um, I'm just kind of putting like all my thoughts out there kind of at you. Um, but again, kind of starting with the basics, right? Filling up like two to three liters of water at the beginning of the day and making sure that before you go to bed, they are basically all finished throughout the day, um, you know, because that can be a huge cause. Looking at the different foods that you're eating, healing the gut is a really important one too, I find in, you know, IBS, like leaky gut, looking back at history of different um you know, antibiotics that you've may be using, different medications, um, you know, castor oil pack topically would always, you know, usually be a good idea. Again, I can't give specific recommendations because I don't know your whole history. So I would definitely work with, um, you know, with a practitioner a bit more on that for sure. But um, yeah, it's, you know, and it's something too that with, and that's what I love about Jen's program for the Simplicity Project is how she created it. Because you know, the very first one is the importance on gut health. So you really learn the foundations and you can start to incorporate that. But then her other modules also look at all the different aspects of, of health that are also really important, right? So maybe for you, maybe the constipation is more coming because maybe there's a thyroid issue going on. Because when you go to your doctor and you get your thyroid checked, they're testing only one indicator, which is TSH, which is thyroid stimulating hormone, which isn't even released by your thyroid. It's released by the hypothalamus. So there's so many other indicators that are really important to be checking out in a full thyroid panel, which I basically want all of my patients to do. Um, because there could kind of be this underlying subclinical hypothyroid, which your doctor won't really treat you for. But if I were to see those numbers, if Jen were able to see those numbers, we'd be like, yep, you are going on a thyroid protocol because this is, you know, the thyroid affects every cell in your body. So maybe that's the cause. So it's all really trying to get more pieces of the puzzle, you know, together to figure out what's going on. You know, another module that Jen has, it has to do all about the different potential toxin exposure that you might be exposed to in your house, outside, and the things that you can control. So, I mean, looking just at your personal care products and, you know, on the average, you know, the average woman before they even leave the house in the morning, you've used, you know, toothpaste, shampoo, conditioner, maybe shaving cream, maybe different lotions for your face and your body, um, maybe like different substances for your hair, depending what you have in your hair, um, perfume, deodorant, um, right. So you're already up to like eight different things that all combined could have a ton of different endocrine disrupting or like causing um, issues with your hormones. Like there are these endocrine disrupting chemicals, which really are everywhere in our in our environment. So trying to reduce those can also be like another area where you're helping your liver because you're not putting all that junk in your environment and absorbing anyway because anything you put on your skin is something you are absolutely absorbing and your poor liver has to deal with it your liver already has like 800 different chemical reactions it needs to be responsible for um we don't want to give it any, any more any more work to do so oh you're welcome karen yeah no no problem thanks for joining Okay, so Lisa, is there a correlation with attention and focus regarding the gut? Oh, yeah, there is. 100%. I see this all the time in kids. Um, I, I, and again, each child is going to be different, but I would say, or even um, adult too. I mean, it, it's, it's kind of the same. Um, but the top things I would really like get rid of like completely full stop eliminate get out of your diet cows dairy white sugar and wheat 
and gluten, like try to go gluten. Um, if you are, you know, getting wheat, get like organic sprouted wheat sort of thing. But I really like when patients are compliant with those three top triggers. And then I'm also adding in support too. So different, you know, foundationals for their gut reducing inflammation. And then there's some really good, especially for kids, some really good homeopathics for them to go on that helps with focus. Uh, Cause for sure that is a huge, huge issue like in the school systems with kids. Um, but even for adults too, you, you know, I know I'd have definitely experienced where like if I've had, a lot of wheat if I you know was on vacation or just like at a party or something and having a lot of wheat and sugar and dairy like I'm completely foggy the next day um right there's a lot of inflammation it's a really hard for your own body to process those things so yeah those would definitely be the top things that I would recommend okay yeah, so Vanessa Lynn, eczema and gut health relation. I got a small patch on the back of my neck every once in a while. I use natural and organic shampoos and soaps, etc. Yeah, so I would I would kind of look to see. I mean, again, cow's dairy is always a big one. Looking at um, you know wheat, um, but then there might even be something else that can be kind of inflammatory that your body's just you know reacting to. So kind of the big foods that could be like they just tend to be more the food sensitivity type of foods um, even like citrus tomatoes um, the nightshade family so having peppers like green peppers red peppers um, eggplant so those are kind of common so yeah so you know i would i would look into that um sometimes also giving the body so i mean it for sure is important looking at the gut health but then even you know because i know people want some also topical relief but using something that is just more natural like i love going to herbs i love using you know something like calendula like a really good calendula cream is um, like marigolds. That's what uh, calendula is the Latin name for marigolds. So that is something I use. I also use a lot of homeopathic creams as well, or like ointments um, that can really help with inflammation. But homeopathics don't suppress the symptom. It's helping the body to kind of remember that yeah we don't need that eczema we don't need to respond that way we're going to respond like our our kind of normal um way in our, our normal like harmonious health and things like that uh lisa yes it's for my son we are having a health time then oh lisa yeah so yeah i would definitely reach out and you know try you know to work with a practitioner um I'm not sure where you are, but like I like if you are within Ontario, I'm happy to help you. I am able to see patients within Ontario. If you don't live near Peterborough, um, Ontario, I can definitely see you on Zoom. But I would yeah definitely reach out to like a holistic practitioner, a naturopath, um, a Chinese medicine doctor, um, a homeopath. Yeah, to definitely get help, support, because it's really nice to try to do everything you can before, you know, medication um, route is, is kind of needed. Yes, Vanessa Lid, you are welcome. Yeah, definitely start tracking to see. Um, yeah, because it's one of those things. It's it's like it's this journey, right? And everyone is so individual. And so, you know, if I had 10 different people with the exact same symptom, I'm not necessarily going to give... 10 exact treatments i'm most likely going to give 10 different individualized treatments because all of our symptoms are arising from all different reasons in our body and we all are lacking certain different things we're lacking you know different nutrients that maybe somebody else isn't or there might be and usually there is too there's definitely you know things that make you you like your own like emotions and spirit and like mental emotional like what's going on and things like that so it's just one of those things to always you know as much as you kind of see what maybe your friends and everyone else is doing but that's not you right this is your own journey it's your own health and you really have to key in on that of what works for you and what works for your body right all right 
Um, oh, Lisa. Yeah, I am in Sutton, but I will drive. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, you can definitely, um, you know, connect with me. Um, so my website is lauraandersonnd.com. So I have, um, you know, an email you can send me there if you want a bit more information. Um, yeah, because I'd be happy. I'd be happy really to help you out with that for sure. Awesome. All right. Well, if there's no other questions, thanks so much, ladies, for joining me. I think this is really fun. Um, and yeah, definitely, you know, leave some more comments if you think of anything else after in relation to gut health and everything like that. Um, but yeah, I hope this was helpful. Again, a lot of this awesome information is all in the Simplicity Project. So if I mean, it's something that you're kind of interested, definitely reach out to Jen or myself or anyone on the team if you have more questions, because it's just, I just feel myself more and more repeating with patients, like let's start with the basics, let's start with the foundations and the gut is always one of those ones that we start with. So I hope everyone has a great rest of your day. And um, yeah, I kind of hope to do this again, maybe take over Jen's Facebook page a bit more. It was really fun. Okay, take care ladies, bye-bye.